fact, I met with the senator who introduced the bill to freeze all school wages this week in his office, and he looked across the desk at me, and he said, I want you to be eliminated in two years. He wants to eliminate our union in two years. It's a blatant, in-your-face, big business, anti-working family, anti-union agenda. And agendas like this one, or in some cases even worse, are getting traction in several states around the country. The bottom line, there are powerful forces that are gunning for us. Now that's the story with the glass half full. Half empty, sorry. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I jumped ahead of page. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed. <laughs> Here is the glass half full story. The threats are out there, but together we can defeat them. We are motivated, we are powerful, and we are determined. This collective bargaining conference is one of the many examples of that resolve to do what is best for our profession, our schools, and our students. There can be, making, there can be no mistake that we need to do some things differently. If we do not lead the way in creating our future, others will do it and they will leave us behind. But we all know from bargaining experiences that there's ways to be flexible without Depending on our principles. The highest quality steel man can make is not only strong, but it is flexible. In these challenging times, our union must display both strength and flexibility. And here's a good example. We've received a lot of positive reaction in the last two weeks to our proposals to close the achievement gap on teacher development and alternative licensure. All of those plans are based in logic and in research, and they protect our core principles. We got out first, and we showed flexibility, and we are the only ones of any group that has a plan to close the achievement gap. We are the only ones with annual reviews for teacher development and evaluation. In fact, we caught the other side so off guard that they couldn't even respond. And when they finally did, it was so bad, they had to apologize the next day for the slur they made. We took the initiative. It's an example of what our union and what all unions need to be. Transformational, not transactional. We either innovate or we stagnate. If we stagnate, we are done. I was in Byron a couple of weeks ago. Are there negotiators here from Byron? Anyone? Ferris Bueller? <laughs> they invited me to come down and celebrate their National Blue Ribbon Award for Excellence in Education. The educators in Byron are doing excellent things. They're innovating around continuous improvement for themselves and their students. They're using data coaches and guided study halls. They're excited about their teachers teaching teachers program. That's transformational, not transactional. When the district couldn't afford math books, the math teachers got together and went on the internet and created a new curriculum that teaches math without books. That's transformational, not transactional. In Byron, the teachers actually like the superintendent and she actually likes them. That's transformational, not transactional. Byron and many other schools across the state are just like that. It's proof that when citizens, parents, teachers, and administrators work together, they can create a community of excellence. As we work to deal with these turbulent times, it's important to keep in mind the great things we all have going for us. For instance, Minnesotans like their teachers. Minnesotans like their public schools. And Minnesotans agree with us on the best ways to make schools better. This last December, we did a poll to figure out what was on people's minds after the election in November. Here's what we found. A vast majority of Minnesotans think their public schools are doing a good or excellent job of educating their children. 
It also found that in the midst of the worst budget crisis in Minnesota history, a majority of Minnesotans still think we need to spend more money on education despite the budget deficit. That is very good news. Here's more. The vast majority of Minnesotans in both parties say they would be less likely to support a lawmaker who cut education spending. They should get, that should get many people's attention in St. Paul. Voters would expel them if they cut spending in our classrooms. This is proof that politicians who want to make drastic cuts in education will be overreaching. And we all know what happens to people when they overreach. They eventually fall. We're working on several ways to use this information and we're sharing it with our colleagues at the Capitol and in the governor's office. That brings me to another powerful factor in our favor. Finally, after eight years, we have a friend in the governor's mansion. <laughs> Governor Dayton is setting a different tone and a different agenda. He recognizes that education reform in Minnesota should be about making the good things better. He has already strongly criticized the demonizing of public employees and we have a direct and open two-way communication with the governor and in fact I'm having breakfast with the governor and other labor leaders on Monday morning at the mansion. It's going to be critical as we move ahead to have that relationship with the governor. Something else to keep in mind. What we hold, no one else possesses. We hold the power of our collective voice and our collective strength. So to our sisters and brothers in labor unions, to the husbands and wives of working families, to the students and parents of public schools, we pledge to stand with them and for them for the benefit of everyone in Minnesota. All of us in this room need to join in that effort. All of our members back home need to join in that effort. We need to get our, mo our members not only motivated, but activated. We don't have to scare them. They're scared enough. We need to give them leadership. We need to give them direction. We need to give them strength, and we need to give them enthusiasm. We need to help them share their successes and share their challenges with their friends, with their colleagues, their neighbors, and lawmakers. Our individual members are our best ambassadors for our profession because we can tell our stories. I was in Warren a few weeks ago. In science, she actually, the science teacher actually has to count the number of students as they come in because she doesn't have enough tables for everybody. On top of that, she's just recovered from breast cancer. She didn't miss a day of work. She slept in the nurse's office during her prep hour if she had chemo and wasn't feeling well. She now has liver cancer. She hasn't missed a day of work. Those are the stories that we need to tell and that are great things happening in our Minnesota schools. I was in North Branch earlier this week. The teachers are rising to the challenge of failed levies and making a four-day school week work for their community. These are the compelling stories. We need to tell these stories for the reason, and, and that's one reason why we've changed our legislative dinners, to put more emphasis on our members telling their story to be our ambassadors and to create one-on-one -on -one relationships that will help everyone understand what happens in our classrooms across the state. This weekend, before you leave, you can go back out to the registration area, and we have computers set up, and we have postcards set up. I would encourage all of you to fill out a postcard or send an email to your legislature and invite them into your school to visit your classroom to tell your story for a day. We will have staff out there to help you do that. We can and we will emerge from this crisis stronger than ever, but only when we help each other realize and exercise the power of our collective strength. I have heard courage described as a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. 
Let's use our muscle. Let's show our courage. Collectively, working smarter, working together, we are strong enough to build a better tomorrow. The work you're going to be doing in these next couple days is the beginning. Our goal is to leave this weekend with new tools to carry out our mission. The serious, we need to be serious about the work that lies ahead, determined to see it through, and confident in the knowledge that what we are doing is right for our profession and right for our students. Colleagues, friends, members, I wish you the best of luck. We are in this together. We are 70,000 strong, and we will come through this together stronger. Thank you, and have a great conference.